Welcome to Mears Chapel United Methodist Church. If you are a guest watching, we especially welcome you. I am Reverend Brendan Newman, the senior pastor here at Mears Chapel. Our mission at Mears Chapel is to connect people to God, people with people, and resources with needs. If you are a guest and would like to receive our newsletter or more information or find ways to get involved, you can use the code on the screen or click the link in the description. Let us pray. Lord, open our spirits to receive your spirit today. Open our hearts to your grace and to each other. Amen. Welcome to Muir's Chapel. Let's sing together this morning. We're going to be singing number 158 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Come Christians, join to sing. Let's sing together. It is time to introduce our August and September Spur On event. We are here in the gym, and if you remember, feeding of the 5,000, our gym gets covered with boxes and tables and canned food and volunteers from 10 different churches coming together and putting those food in those boxes. That is right around the corner. We need you to start collecting food right now. Be looking for the flyer with the list of items set aside. Labor Day to pack the boxes, and September 11th, Saturday, for the feeding of the 5,000. We hope you join us. August 19th is a prayer vigil from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We hope you'll sign up for a spot to pray. Use the QR code to sign up or check the link in the video description for the form to get involved. Be on the lookout for more details. We hope you have marked your calendars for the first fellowship event we've had since reopening the church. It's a talent show and an ice cream social. All you can eat ice cream, all you can stay in talent from your chapel, a whole variety of stuff. Saturday, August 21st at six o'clock p.m. here in the gym. See you then. 
We all know that Muir's Chapel has talent, but now let's see it. If you can sing, play an instrument, dance, do something really cool, do magic, if you're funny, if you just want to get on stage and ham it up for a minute, contact Lauren or the church office to get on the program and let's have a night of fun. Hey, Muir's Chapel. I'm over here at Muir's Landing, which is right across the street from our church. Our church is right there. We are coming over here August 29th, the last Sunday in August at 1030, right after our 915 service, and we're going to have Link Sunday. We're going to play games with the children. We're going to get some of the adults. Basically, we're going to start building relationships with our actual neighbor. We're going to love our neighbor and ourselves. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to have Kona Ice. It's going to be a great day. And so go ahead and mark your calendar. August the 29th at 1030, Link Sunday. We're going to do something important, and I hope that you can make it, and we look forward to seeing you August 29th. See you there. Here's Landy. Woo! Camp Meeting Month is right around the corner, and we are celebrating with our top five. Please send us your top five scripture passages or your top five Christian songs or hymns, and we'll be sure to include them in our Camp Meeting Worship Series. Hey boys and girls, I would like to introduce to you the newest member of our family. This is Cookie. This is our beautiful dog. We love Cookie very, very much. She's very cute. Do you know that we are Cookie's keeper? That means we keep her healthy, we keep her safe, and we make sure that she knows that she's loved very much. And did you know that Pastor Brenda is going to preach in a few minutes and talk about how God is our keeper and that God keeps us safe and that God lets us know how much God loves us and how much uh, we are part of his family, the same way that Cookie is now part of our family. And so I just want us to be thankful today that God is our keeper and takes care of us. And we should be very thankful for that. And if you have a dog and you take care of your dog, then you can kind of know how much God loves us because you know how much you love your dog or your pet. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, children's message, and we'll see you soon. Bye. We turn now to our prayer time. If you would like to submit a prayer request, you may use the code on the screen or click the link in the description. We continue this morning to remember those in our prayers um, that have been going through illnesses, Donna and Monica and Rudy and Howard and Jackie, um, Scott um, and Bud, we're remembering all of those. And today especially, we're praying for those who are weary and exhausted. Our scripture talks about um, from Isaiah 40 that God will renew our strength. So we're praying this morning for that renewal of strength. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you are the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, and that your understanding is unsearchable and you do not faint or grow weary. We come to you, however, often weary and exhausted, and our understanding is limited and we need your wisdom and we yearn for renewed strength and hope. So Lord, we pray for everyone who is weary and worn out today. We pray for leaders in every arena and every country who need wisdom for the constantly changing status of the pandemic and for trying to lead in such a fractured and broken time. Grant them wisdom. Draw them near to you. Help them, O oh Lord, to no longer try to rely on their own wisdom, but rather to lean on you, to seek you, to wait for you to renew their strength. Help our leaders, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for exhausted healthcare workers. Renew their strength. Give them compassion and energy for those in their care. We pray for educators and young families, weary of the ever-changing messages about schools and safety. Renew their strength. Grant them energy and wisdom and creativity with their families and responsibilities. Keep our children safe. Lord, we pray for those weary and exhausted from illness from doctor's visits and medical treatments, from caregiving roles and the endless uncertainty. Bless them with healing. Renew not only their physical strength, but also their emotional and spiritual strength. 
be especially with Donna and Monica and Scott and Howard and Jackie and Rudy today. Lord, we pray for those weary and exhausted from trying to pay bills and put food on the table, those who are still searching for employment or those who are underemployed, that though they work long hours, it's not even enough to meet basic needs. We pray for those around the globe who have known only poverty, and we pray that you energize all of us to work harder and smarter to end the cycles of poverty. Lord, we thank you that you are our keeper and that we may always come to you for help. And we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. And in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Shame. When the solid ground is falling out, from underneath my feet between the black anxiety and my red eyes I can barely see when I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family bullying I can feel the rain reminding me in the eye of the storm you remain addiction in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. You hate in the eye of the storm. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future I picture. Fear. And when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face. Betrayal. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. Yes, you do, Lord. In the middle of the sickness, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me. Doubt. Failure. Racism. The doctor says I've only got a few months left. It's like a bitter pill I'm swallowing. I can barely take a breath. And when addiction steals my baby girl, and there's nothing I can do. My only hope is to trust you I trust you, Lord In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You guard my soul You alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me
presence. My hope is gone, Lord. My flesh is failing. You're still holding on. Oh, when the storm is raging, the storm is raging. Perseverance. When the flesh is failing, the flesh is failing. You're still holding on. When the storm is raging, the storm is raging. And my hope is gone. Peace. Hear the word of the Lord from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 through 31 in Psalm 121 from Isaiah chapter 40 have you not known have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth he does not faint or grow weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, speak through me. If necessary, speak in spite of me. And always speak beyond me. Amen. Running on empty, struggling with concentration and focus, Fatigue is your enemy. Pushed into an unsafe space, sustainability, emotional exhaustion. Long before the pandemic, these were headlines. The Olympics has most recently elevated these concerns to headline status once again. Simone Biles spoke out openly about her struggles with focus and her concern about her mental health as she withdrew from a number of competitions in gymnastics. I affirm her self-awareness and her attention to safety, but I have particularly appreciated her selfless witness when she was quoted. And she said this, I'm not going to lose a medal for this country and these girls because they've worked way too hard to have me go out there and lose a medal. Though other headlines about Olympics have been less pervasive, there have been a number of them. Runner Sam Parsons shared that he, like the other athletes, had pushed himself into an unsafe space and, and he said you can only keep your foot on the gas for so long. The postponement of the Olympics led to closed training facilities, canceled meets, mounting anxiety, and it contributed to a number of withdrawals from those global games. I have had a number of folks share with me recently how weary they are, how weary they are of the pandemic, of changing up schedules, of deciding to mask or not to mask. And I confess that I share your weariness. And yet I speak with healthcare professionals or those whose immune systems are suppressed. And I know that God calls my prayers and God calls my thoughts to be other focused. 
because there is a weariness and an exhaustion beyond my weariness and exhaustion. You know, frontline health workers are now gearing up for a fourth wave of COVID and it's taken its toll on them. And yet exhaustion and burnout and working at a manageable pace and using resources in a way that's sustainable, that was a topic long before the pandemic began in 2020. Sustainability has been a conversation, whether in athletics or in the workplace or talking about the environment. You know, environmentalists stress that we need to use our natural resources with the least damage to the environment. And that sustainability is what got ignored during our years of economic growth. Corporations and companies have been challenged to address sustainability for a number of years, but not just with environmental concerns the hours and the expectations of employees. An article in the Harvard Business Re Review more than a decade ago shared interviews from senior executives who acknowledged that fatigue and exhaustion were the biggest issues they faced for themselves and for their teams. Tony Schwartz wrote in this article that not even the most talented and motivated employees can run on empty. So what executives were learning back then was that negativity and impatience and defensiveness and frustration, they skyrocketed when their employees were exhausted and weary and it became counterproductive. So we read in Isaiah 40 today, even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. Weakness, exhaustion, a sense of powerlessness, they are as old as the existence of humanity. The message, the good news that's found in both Isaiah 40 and Psalm 121 is that weakness and powerlessness are never roadblocks to God's grace. Weakness and, and weariness and a sense of powerlessness are never a reason to stay away from prayer. They're never a reason to wallow in doubt. They're never a reason to fear that God is not with us. But more than ever, they are a reason to seek God, to seek the one who can sustain us, to seek the one who can renew our strength so that we can go again. In the scripture from Isaiah, the prophet had come to them during a time of crisis. And it was a crisis that's beyond even a pandemic. A crisis that I'm not certain that many of us listening today can relate to, though millions of people across the globe can. At the time that this scripture was written from Isaiah to the Israelites, they were refugees. They had no place to to lay their heads in comfort and call home. Each child and young person, you know, even a child and young person will join in that weariness when their schedules and their lives and their security has been put at risk. Because those of us who know children at all know that, that children need to feel secure in order to rest. The Israelite refugees had lost so much that they experienced what some have termed spiritual amnesia. You know, crises can do that to us at, at any age. When we're struggling to put one foot in front of the other, sometimes it's difficult to remember the good times from the past. Sometimes it's hard to remember that there's a bigger picture in life. And sometimes it's hard to even remember that we have people to go to that will help us and that we have a God who loves us and will sustain us. The Israelites knew about God. They had been taught about God. They knew that he was the creator of all that is. Yet in their weariness, in their weariness, they could not piece together that if all the heavens, if all the heavens were under the control of one God, you know, if, if God held grasp of every star in the sky, more stars than we can ever count or will ever even be aware of, that God had not forgotten them and that God could sustain them in their weariness. Whatever you're experiencing right now, whatever you're experiencing right now, God is more powerful and God can sustain and renew you. 
The 121st Psalm is a good companion to this passage from Isaiah. I like what scholar Leander Keck wrote of this psalm. He said that although it's short in length, Psalm 121 is long in, in influence. Short in length, long in influence. My guess is that some of you listening right now have memorized Psalm 121 sometime in the past or recited it often, especially maybe in worship and maybe read responsively as we did this morning. It affirms what Isaiah also affirmed, that God is our sustainer, that God can renew us. It is short, it's only eight verses long, but there's one verb, one form of a verb that's used six times, eight verses used six times to keep, to keep. God is our keeper. We're not merely possessions in the eyes of God, but God cares for us. To sustain, to keep is to sustain. It's to provide for, it's to watch over, it's to be present. You know, God is found amidst all of the realities of life. You know, and clearly the writer of the psalm is facing some difficult times. Psalm 121 is placed within a category of what we call pilgrim psalms. They're believed to be written um, during the course of or the beginning of a journey. So at this point, the people were going on a journey, and they must have thought that the journey was going to be hard, because this is before the journey has even started. And what does the psalmist ask? From where will my help come? No, it's going to be a long, hard journey. Where will my help come? You know, the psalm is thought to compare God, the one true God, the creator of heaven and earth, to the false gods. And so this psalm, when we might miss this because it's an ancient culture, it's playing against two false ideas that were circulating in that ancient culture. See, we can tend to think of lifting our eyes to the hills as a way of looking to God for help. Now, the writer was looking to God for help, but in that culture, the hills were dangerous territory. So they're starting this journey and they know they're going into danger. They know it's going to be hard. There were bandits and, and robbers along the way. And also on the hillsides, that's where many of the shrines to the other gods were located. So they were going into two different kinds of danger. And the psalm reads, I lift up my eyes to the hills. It does not say that the hills are the source of help. But rather, when I look at all the dangers and I look at all the things the world is throwing at me and, and um, I ask, where is the true help? Where will my help come from? So the help was not going to come from the hillsides, but it was going to come from the God who made the hillsides and who made every part of creation. And this God, this creator of, of all, we might find this line in the psalm a little strange. It says, God does not slumber or sleep. Israel's neighbors in that ancient culture, they worshiped many deities, many gods, had, had these many, many shrines on the hillsides. But they believed, they believed that these gods slept during the winter months. And these gods were only awake during the season of growth and harvest. And so they're being told that God doesn't sleep. God doesn't slumber. God is always keeping watch. God is faithful. God is steadfast. God is constant. And that was new in that ancient culture. The big picture of this psalm is that God never fails to keep watch. That's why this, this word is so important. God is our keeper. The Lord keeps us six times in these verses. The pervasiveness of this key understanding to keep matches the pervasiveness of God's protecting presence. That God is always here. We're always on a journey. Life's a journey. Our, our life with our families is a journey. We grow. We have milestones. Things change. Um, we journey as our jobs change. Our faith is a journey. And there's not hardly a journey anywhere that you'll go on at some point in your life where you don't find yourself weary and tired and exhausted. Some of you pace the floors at least one night this past week. Maybe it was with a newborn. Maybe it was with a sick child. Maybe it was with an elderly loved one who has Alzheimer's. 
Some of you pace the floors because you've been filling out job applications, not just for weeks, but for months or maybe even longer. And that job has not opened up yet. And the anxiety mounts. Some of you feel exhausted from medical treatments. Some of you are weary just from the conflict in your homes or the conflict in your workplaces or just the conflict in our world right now. We know what it is to be weary. We know what it is to need renewal. And that's the first point in the 121st Psalm. He knew he needed to seek help. He wasn't even on the journey yet, but he knew he needed to seek help. He was aware of his need. You know, sometimes we become so tired, we're not even aware of how tired we are, and we don't realize our need. You know, that's not unlike what happened with some of the Olympic athletes. They were pushing and pushing for so long and so hard, and they just didn't realize how it had all built up within them, and it came to a head. And then there are completely other times in our lives when everything's running smoothly and we don't realize we need a keeper. You know, we kind of think we're the keeper of our own lives. Everything's going well. We've got it all under control. I've had moments and glimpses of that in my life, but they don't usually last too long. Robert Fisher wrote, What a shock this must be to those who think they are keeping their own lives. They balance their own checkbooks. They stay on top of their medical appointments. They do their own shopping, and they generally take responsibility for their own well-being. The idea that they have a keeper who watches over them and protects them may be tough to understand, let alone to accept. So sometimes we're not even aware that we need a keeper. In the midst of our self-sufficiency and our individualism, we will reach that point where we realize that we simply can't be our own gods. Because if we try to be our own gods, life, life will remind us otherwise sooner or later. Perhaps faith begins when we recognize our need and we accept that we have and need a keeper to watch over us. In our children's moment today, we talked about caring for pets. You know, you don't just own a pet. You don't just have a pet. You take care of a pet. You keep a pet. You provide for them. You care for them. You do this because of the connection and the love you feel for them. You know, whether you're weary or exhausted or facing a mountain or you've forgotten about God, God's not forgotten about you. God is loving you, even at this moment and this much as we might not like the comparison, we need to be taken care of as much as our pets do. Perhaps faith can deepen not only when we accept that we need a keeper, but when we learn that God is trustworthy. The Israelites were in such an overwhelming situation that they had wrongly translated this as disregard by God but they are being assured that God is with them, that God is constant, and that they can trust God. Perhaps faith deepens even more when we accept that there's a bigger picture and that God has a purpose for us in that bigger picture. The Israelites not only doubted that God was still with them, but they were failing to understand their place in the larger created order. They had forgotten about God's call on their lives. They were the ones to let everyone else know that there is only one true God and not all of these deities and these shrines and these false gods that the others were worshiping. At one time, they had been busy following God where he would lead them, but they had lost their way. But God was saying, I'm still taking care of you. I'm still your keeper. I'm calling you back to me. The key message for both Isaiah 40 and Psalm 121 is that we have a God who chooses to sustain us. He waits for us to come to him and accept him so that he can renew our strength. We will fall exhausted, but not weariness 
or exhaustion or dangers or forgetfulness will be a roadblock to God's sustaining and renewing presence. Hear the words again from Isaiah 40. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted it. tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is up.